Hey art nerds, happy holidays. Today I'm gonna show you how to use alcohol markers to color this wintry girl. So this illustration was created, was rendered on Strathmore 300 series Bristol. If you'd like to color along with me, there'll be links down in the description below where you can purchase this line art. If you're one of my fantastic patrons on Patreon, you get this line art for free. So make sure you check Patreon. So the first part was printing this illustration because originally it was a digital sketch printing the blue lines onto the Bristol paper. Then I penciled the details and kind of tightened things up a bit using just regular H lead. Now I'm going to ink it using Tombow Furunosuke brush pins. I've talked about these brush pins in several videos. I really like them. I don't know why there isn't a video just dedicated to how much I like these brush pins. They are alcohol marker safe, they are waterproof, and they come in a variety of colors. So they're great for anime style line arts like this one. I have created tutorials where I talk about using local color to line your piece and how that can create a lighter, more airier illustration as well as how that doesn't add additional unnecessary contrast the way inking with just black ink might. So for me, I prefer inking with brush pins. That's basically all that I ink with and that's what I recommend other people try inking with. It takes a little bit of a learning curve, although the Tombow Fudenosuke brush pins are a little bit easier than some of the other brush pins on the market because they're a little bit sturdier. The nibs are a little bit harder than some of the other nibs. So they're a little easier to control. But I think once you guys start inking with brush pins, you'll see why I recommend them and I love inking with them so much. One brush pin basically covers the whole gamut of technical pins. You can get super fine lines with a good brush pin. You can get really nice thick lines with a good brush pin. So not only does it become easier to do line weights and to do different line widths, but it's also more economical. You're only buying one brush pin to cover all your line weights. So that means you can buy a bunch of different fun colors. I'm going to have links to all of the materials I used in this tutorial down in the description below, as well as a list of the colors that I used and as any additional information I think you guys might find helpful, useful, or informative. I have a lot of alcohol marker tutorials here on the channel if you're new to coloring with markers. So I'll link some of my favorites down in the description as well. So as you guys have probably noticed, I am using local color to ink each individual item. So what I do to begin with is I start with like a post-it note and I kind of brainstorm what colors I want everything to be. That way I'm not thinking about it or possibly making mistakes when I'm actually inking. I can just dive in and start inking right away. So for this piece, I really wanted it to have more of a wintry feel than just a straightforward Christmas feel. I wanted to avoid doing green and red, and I wanted to use some fun colors that would make a kind of dreary wintry day feel a little bit more festive. So I'm gonna be using teal as the main body of the hat, purple for the scarf, and a really bright pink for her sweater. So when you're inking, I recommend you take your time, you kind of slow things down. I'm using a blotter sheet. This protects the paper from my hand and it protects my hand from smearing the ink. So this is a great way to kind of just take a little insurance policy out while you're inking, especially on smoother papers like the Strathmore Smooth Bristol. 
and I'm inking on a heavier paper. It's a little bit heavier than cardstock because I know it'll take the alcohol marker well. And I really like to do a lot of blending when I'm using alcohol marker. So I'm looking for papers that can handle a lot of layers. So now that our inks are done, I'm going to allow my inks to cure for 24 hours before I erase the pencils underneath. And here you can see the erased pencils. It's really important to try and remove as much pos pencil as possible because your pencils can cause smearing. So another important step in my alcohol marker art is swatching the colors I think I might potentially use for the illustration. So that means pulling a bunch of colors, swatching them, and figuring out what's going to work with the palette. For you guys, I also label the color numbers and the color names, but if I'm just coloring for myself, I normally don't do that. I also number them in order that I want to use them. So the colors that I'm using for this illustration are Sketch Marker 025, Blick 095, Copic E00, Prismacolor PB230, Prismacolor one, uh, PB12, Copic E34, Copic E95, Copic E11, Copic E34, Sketch Marker R115, Sketch Marker R53, Prismacolor PB24, Copic R01, Copic E93, Blick 079, Copic R02, Prismacolor PB60, Prismacolor PB171, Prismacolor 127, Prismacolor uh, PB51, Prismacolor 70, Blick 036, Copic E23, Copic E09, Copic E08, Prismacolor PB213, B000, B00, B60, all three of those are Copics, Sketch Marker G163, Copic BG15, Prismacolor PB46, Prismacolor PB37, Copic BG09, Blick 006, Copic RV23, Copic RV13, Copic RV55, Prismacolor PB1, and Prismacolor PB53. And for her eyes, I'm using Prismacolor PB47 and Prismacolor PB40. And I'll have all of those listed out down in the description below. And basically, when it comes to me and alcohol markers, I use whatever colors and whatever brushes I like and work for the piece. So I'm gonna use several different brands for this illustration. And I'll tell you guys that none of these brands have sponsored this video because they don't normally want you mixing brands together. So here is my swatch sheet. This is this photo was taken at the end of this tutorial. So we actually have some splatters from the ink splatter technique I'm gonna be using a little bit later on. And like I said, I'm gonna have them listed out down in the description below. But this is just a suggestion. I want you guys to use whatever colors you like and whatever colors you have. I don't want you feeling like you have to go out and buy a bunch of colors. However, I do happen to like all of the brands listed in this tutorial. So of course I like Copics. I like the Blick Studio Sketch, uh, Blick Studio Brush Markers. I like Sketch Markers and I like Prismacolor markers. So for her eyes, I'm starting out by applying a shadow color to the whites of her eyes. So I'm using B000 and B00. And that's when I kind of noticed that my Copic B000s are both pretty dry. So it's time for a refill. For the skin, I started with Blick 095, which is a really, really light kind of sand color or a beachy color. This is going to be the lightest skin tone I use. I'm blending it out, softening that transition, using my over blending technique a little bit with a colorless blender. And then I'm going over it again with the same color, our Blick 095. Now, if you look carefully at my swatch sheet, I have all my colors kind of grouped by what they're being used for as well as what order I'm going to use them in. So at this point, I wanted to start establishing the blush because I wanted her to have like really flush wintry cheeks. So I'm starting with Copic R01, a really, really light, almost white 
pe pink or peachy pink color. And I applied that to the tops of her eyes, to her cheeks going across the bridge of her nose, under her nose, to her lips, and underneath her neck. Next, I'm going in with the sketch marker, 025, and I'm adding another layer to her skin. And I'm trying to leave a lot of the original color there rather than just covering up the same layers again and again. I added another layer of blush. So I'm using Blick 079 for the second layer of blush. And then I'm going in with... Um, it looks like I was using R01, and then I'm going in with my darkest blush color, Copic E93, and I'm going to blend that out a little bit. So I'm trying to avoid really harsh blush colors. I also want to point out that this video has been time-lapsed several times. It took me about three hours to color the whole thing. So if you don't work as fast as I do, that's fine, because I don't actually work this fast either. So now I'm adding another layer of skin tone shadow to this piece. So I am using, that looks like Copic E34. Ah, no, that's the Copic E34. So I must have used Copic E00 for that third layer. And now we have Copic E34 to add in some shadow. And then I'm using Sketch Marker in Fig, and I apologize because I don't actually have the color number written down for that, but it's a really nice kind of muted red-violet that works quite well for skin shadows. Now we're going into the eyes, and I'm starting with PB47, and then I'm going in with, it looks like maybe Copic RV23 to add a little bit of pink. Then I'm adding in a little bit of purple, so PB60. And then I'm adding in our darker blue, our PB Prismacolor 40. And then adding in a little bit of really dark purple, PB51. And I did that just to get some fun colors added into the eyes. So next we're going to start the hair. I'm starting with PB70. And you guys will notice that I left the eyelashes open. That's so that I could add some of the hair color to the eyelashes. And this is one of the reasons I really love working with brush markers. Is I can really utilize flicking motions of my wrist to capture things like highlights. Like the highlights in the hair here. So I'm leaving a little bit of the white of the hair still visible. Now if you mess up, if you don't leave as much as you'd like, you can always go back in with white gouache. So PB70 is our highlight color. It is the lightest color in the hair that we're using today. Next, I'm going in with Copic E23, adding that to the eyelashes. And I realize I actually want to color the white areas, the fur on the hat first, since that overlaps her hair. So I'm using my Runny Dry B000 as our base white color. So that applies kind of the lightest shadows to the white fur. You don't have to use a blue. You could use a cream color if you wanted or a very light brown. Then I'm going in with B00, so Copic B00 to add in more shadows. And I'm doing this kind of stippling or spronging motion to create the effect of hair follicles. Then I'm going in, well, I tried a color. I didn't like it, so I blended that back out. See? Making mistakes is normal. So I went in with PB47, which works much better with these blues. So B00 and B000 are kind of cooler blues in the Copic family. So now that I have the fur handled, I'm going in with our second color, E23, from Copic. And I'm leaving a lot of our original PB70 still visible because that's the highlight color. So we're building up those highlights in this illustration. Also using this as an opportunity to color in the hot chocolate and add in some freckles across the bridge of her nose. Next, I'm going in with Blick 
036, so an even darker brown. And when I was selecting browns for her hair, I wanted warmer, lighter browns. Um, with Kara, I usually do a lot of really dark red browns. So I've been trying to kind of play around with different hair colors in some of my marker illustrations, just to add a fun element. You can use whatever colors you like. And if you're looking for some hair color suggestions, some blending triads that work really well, I have a tutorial that I'll link down in the description below that might help you out. So for our next color, I'm using just a little bit of E09 from Copic. It is a very saturated red brown. I think the color name is like leather or burnt sienna. So I'm using it kind of sparingly here just to add in some extra contrast and shadows. And I'm blending that back out just a bit because it was a little bit much with our previous color, the Blick 036. Then to add in some final shadows to show, you know, like the cap is sitting on top of her hair, I'm using Prismacolor PB213, our darkest brown in this series. So now we're starting in on the hat. I wanted to avoid anything that was too overtly Christmas just because I'm doing a lot of Christmas art this year. And I wanted to do something that was a little bit more wintry. So I am starting with Prismacolor PB46. And that's one of the reasons I'm using multiple brands of marker is there are certain things that Prismacolor does really well that Copic just can't quite do. Next, I'm going in with PB37, a slightly darker blue green kind of in the same vein as our PB46. So Prismacolor does purples and teals and some pinks just so well. Adding in another layer of that same color, our PB37. And then I'm going in with Copic BG09, which is a little bit bluer and a little bit cooler. While that's drying, I'm adding in some white shadows to the tassels on her scarf. So I'm starting with B000. I'm also coloring in her mittens. And this is the thing about drying out Copics or Copics that need a refill. They're gonna look scrubby, they're gonna look dirty. Even this really light color looked kind of scrubby and dirty. Now I'm going in with B00, so the next darker but still very light blue, to add just some more shadows to the tassels and to indicate some shadows on her mittens as well, to give it a little bit more form. And then finally, I'm going in with PB47, so the same color we used for her eyes, and to add the shadows on the fur, to add the darkest shadows to the tassels and to her mittens. And that's the thing about white. White does have shadows and there are different kinds of whites. You have warm whites, you have gray whites, you have very cool whites. So I recommend picking your white based on what you're coloring. So for the smoke coming off of her hot chocolate, I'm using B60, which is a really purpley blue. And now I also wanna color in some of the knit on her scarf. And I'm using the lightest teal for that. So our Prismacolor PB46, it's going to be a purple scarf, but I wanted to add in accents of the other colors. So one of the ways I utilize color is I try to pick a really limited palette and just work around that limited palette. And I try to juxtapose those colors throughout the piece. So there's so much teal in the hat. I don't want a lot of teal in the rest of the piece necessarily, but I am using a little bit of the teal in the cup as well as on her scarf. And that just kind of helps balance the piece. So for her scarf, I'm starting with PB60. And good, true purples are another thing that Prismacolor does really well. And I'm trying to capture the knit texture of the scarf. So I'm using kind of a sprouncing motion and I'm leaving a bit of a rim highlight along the edge of the scarf. Now when I was inking the scarf it was really important that I try to capture the texture in how I ink the scarf as well. So I use little scallops of varying sizes. You don't want them all to be identical because then it starts looking kind of too cookie cutter. You want to kind of vary them and that adds an organic hand-drawn element to it. So since this is the base color for the scarf, I'm just coloring in the majority of the scarf and I'm not really utilizing any special techniques at this point.
So for my second color on the scarf, I'm using PB171, a slightly darker purple. And I also want to remind you guys that alcohol markers are a lot like watercolor. If you apply them while the alcohol ink is still wet, you're going to get softer blends. If you allow the ink to dry, you're going to get more distinct layers. I could have done and probably should have done another layer of PB60, our first color, on top of this just to really utilize all of the colors that I have. I've said in other marker videos that I think every marker, every good marker, you can get about three layers of tone with them. So you should really utilize that as much as possible. It's a great way to make the most of a smaller marker collection. In this tutorial, I didn't do that so much. So for our second layer, I'm leaving a lot of highlights from the first layer. And I'm also doing kind of a sprouncing motion, kind of bobbing the brush up and down on the paper and varying how much pressure I apply. And this is a technique that's very difficult to do if you're using bullet markers, but very easy to do if you're using brush tip markers. Next, I'm going in with our third purple tone, PB127. And speaking of tones, if you're looking for an easier way to select perfect blends, if you're looking for an easier way to just kind of sit down and make art you're going to like, I recently reviewed the Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend Brush Markers and I have a tutorial that I think you guys will really enjoy. I'm going to link that in the cards as well as in the description below. I hope you guys will check it out. So you guys can really see the texture and the kind of sprouncing motion I'm using to color the knit on the scarf. I wanted kind of a chunkier knit in the scarf. Now, I really like texture. I really like kind of more organic feelings, especially when it comes to rendering fabric and particularly when it comes to handmade fabrics or knits like this scarf. A chunkier texture also implies that this is a homemade scarf, that either she made this scarf or someone made it for her, and it also evokes warmer feelings. Now, some of those areas were a little bit too pronounced, a little bit too dark. So I'm going back with PB127, our third color, and I'm just kind of blending back our darkest color a bit. And then I'm going in with PB51, uh, which is a warmer dark purple. I don't necessarily have a good cool dark purple that would work in this. Now you could start using some of the cool grays, but my concern is that would just desaturate it a little bit too much. So in order to kind of get the colors you want, you can always layer on the prior colors or other colors that work a little bit better, but aren't exactly perfect for the situation and just kind of blend the two back and forth until you get what you're looking for. So for her sweater, I am starting with a really, really light color, Blick 06 or, or 006, or it might be Blick 66. I, I apologize. It, the color name is Rose Petal, and it's a very light pink, almost a fluorescent pink. Now, I'm not aiming for a fluorescent pink because that doesn't really scan well, and the camera really struggles with that. So when I'm doing tutorials for you guys, I usually kind of dance around fluorescence, but I don't really use true fluorescence because they make the camera all screwy, but I am using it as a base color. The next color I'm using to apply the majority of the color, because I wanted to use that very light blit color as kind of the highlight on the knit. The next color I'm using is Copic RV23. And Copic's coloring system is a little bit weird. I wouldn't necessarily classify this as a red violet because that's what RV stands for. This is really more of a pink, like a true pink even, not a salmon, but like a bluish pink. And I'm leaving a little bit of rim lighting along the sleeves just to kind of give the sweater a little bit more form. So for our second color, I'm sorry, our third color, I'm using Copic RV13. 
And this one started getting kind of scratchy on me too. I think it's just time for a whole Copic refill. Or it may be that I had the heater cranked a little too high that evening and the ink was evaporating a little bit more quickly than I would have liked. You can see how scrubby it gets on her, on her sleeve there. That's not really that big a deal because I'm going to cover it in a little bit. So now I'm working on the cuffs of her sweater using Copic RV55. So even cooler, even darker. This is starting to be what I would think of as a red violet. But even so, it's still very pink. It's more pink than really red. And I'm paying a lot of attention to sort of the, the knit lengths. I had to be very careful how I said that. My brain wanted to get all screwy with me. And I wanted to leave some of the links very visible. And if you want to draw a chunky sweater like this, I recommend starting out with reference. So now I'm kind of blending that color back using the RV23 just to kind of get a softer transition between the two colors. Now I'm going in with Prismacolor PB1 to start adding in some more shadow and to create a little bit more form. And I'm gonna color in basically that whole back sleeve using PB1 because that's gonna create a lot of shadow and it's gonna create a lot of depth. And this would take so much longer if I was using bullet tip markers. This is one of the reasons I'm so harsh about it. It's just the time constraints. I can work so much faster with a nice, large, soft brush tip like Prismacolor or Copic or Sketch Markers than I can scrubbing around with bullet tip markers. So I'm blending our PB1 back a little bit with our Copic RV55, which is still a shadow color, but lighter than the shadow color we applied. And then I'm going in with our darkest sh shading color so far for the sweater, PB53. This is mulberry and it's really more of like a, a real red violet than some of the Copic RV colors. So now I'm going to add a white rim to the cup and I'm starting with B00 rather than B000 for this and adding in another layer. Then I'm going in with our Prismacolor PB47. So you guys see, even though I used a lot of colors, I repeat them throughout this piece over and over again. So they get utilized a lot. Now I'm just going to add in some purple accents and kind of solidify some of the purple shadows on the scarf. Add another layer to our smoke. Color in her teeth using B00. Add in a little bit more shadow to our white objects using PB47. Add a little bit more teal shadow using our Copic BG09. And add some purple shadows to her sweater here and there just to kind of up that contrast a little bit and get a little bit more definition and volume going on. And I'm going to blend that back out using our darkest of the pinks, our PB53. And then I'm just adding in a little bit more shadow to her hair using PB213. So at this point, I'm kind of evaluating the lighting and the contrast and adding a little bit more shadow. So now I want to do the background on this piece. And I've been having so much fun with the spray backgrounds like I did in October for the two witch pieces. So I created a mask using these like post-it sticky tapes to just kind of create a border. Now I'm just kind of creating a light paper mask. You can use frisket, you can use masking fluid, but this is very easy, especially when you're using spray inks. I cut it out and I'm going to fill these small spray bottles with a little bit of liquid alcohol ink. So I have Ranger's Adirondack in eggplant and I have two Copic various inks and I'm gonna end up grabbing a Copic red violet 
just to kind of add some light pink into the background so it's not all dark purple. So here comes the fun part. We're going to spritz and spray the background with our alcohol inks. This makes a big mess, but it's really easy to clean up with rubbing alcohol. And this is one of the reasons I work on a Teflon coated work surface. A glass worktop would also work really well. You're probably going to get some staining even with the Teflon. But the nice thing about the Teflon is I can just rip it off. All right, so once I've finished my spray technique, I have a little bit of a white halo. I have mixed feelings about it. It's not the worst, but I do want to kind of meld everything in a little bit better. So I'm using a really light blue violet and I'm picking up some of the spray inks from my Teflon work surface to kind of dab them in so I can get some darker areas of color. And I am a so sorry for my camera being all weird and screwy. It can't decide if it wants to focus on the art, on my hand, or on my marker. So my intention isn't to perfectly hide the transition. It's just to kind of, you know, make it a little bit more normal. Alright, so we have our background just about done. I also dripped on some rubbing alcohol to create those kind of circles in the background. Next, I'm going to use a little bit of white gouache and I'm going to draw some really simple snowflakes in the background. And this is a technique I used all the way last year when I was reviewing the Color It markers and I painted a Nutcracker inspired ballerina. I'll link that down in the description below if you're looking for even more wintry holiday marker ideas. I'm also, not only am I painting some of the snowflakes in the background behind our girl, but I'm also painting a few in front of her girl just to kind of create this more snowy scene. And these are very simple eight point snowflakes that have like little branching off fractals, just very simply drawn. I remembered that I needed to color in her mouth, so I'm using a dark red for that. And now I'm using the white gouache to add in some white highlights. This is particularly important in the eyes. It's kind of when the piece comes to life. Even though in this illustration I left those highlights kind of marked out, I'm reinforcing them now. And I'm also going to use them, use the white highlights to really make the white fur have a furry appearance. And this is kind of a discretion thing. You can use, A, you can use whatever white additive you want. You can use gel pins. You can use uh, PH Martin's Bleed Proof White, which I really like. You can use gouache, whatever you're comfortable with. This could also be fun with like glittery gel pins just to add glitter accents here and there. Now I'm also flicking some white gouache on this illustration just to kind of further the snow feeling. And I'm mostly just trying to avoid her face so I don't get like a big old snowdrop on her face. So here's the other fun part, removing the masking fluid and remembering that, hey, we started out with white paper. Now the inks kind of seeped in underneath the border. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some white gouache just to clean that up. You could use a paper trimmer and just trim it off. It's really up to you. But I'm still pretty pleased with how it's turned out. And my goal isn't to get rid of it completely, but just to clean it up a little bit so I have that contrast back. There's just something about starting with a blank sheet of paper and adding all this color and adding all this detail. And then remembering that like, hey, originally I started with nothing mm -hmm. and now I have something. So um, this piece is almost finished. I apologize for the buzzing. I thought I had myself on Do Not Disturb. I did not, but it's good news. Verse is going to hit the deadline for 7-inch Kara Volume 2. So we'll be able to have copies out to people for Christmas. So hey, I'll take an interruption if it's good news. But our Christmas girl is just about finished. I'm going to have printable line arts in the description. If you're not a patron, you can purchase them. If you're a patron, you already have them. And thank you guys so much for your patronage. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I sure had fun 
coloring it. I love working with alcohol markers. It's such a relaxing evening for me and they go so much faster than watercolor. So it's been really nice to be able to play around with alcohol markers a bit more this year now that 7 inch Kara Volume 2 is basically in the bag. If you guys enjoy my art, if you want to get sneak peeks for what I'm working on, you can join me over on Instagram at instagram.com slash natosoup. Share all sorts of sneak peeks. I hope you guys have a safe Happy and warm holiday season, and I hope to see you guys again really soon. Happy holidays, guys. Bye.